So uh, I'm, I'm Bruce Miller, uh, Vice President of Product Marketing for Xeris. And I want to uh, next get into a, a discussion. We brought a customer here today, um, uh, Shane Moulton from Optics Media. He's the CEO. Um, he is both a partner, an MSP partner of ours, as well as a customer. Um, he'll talk about some of his different use cases that he uh, works with in his business. And I'd like to uh, introduce Shane Moulton. Well, hello. Uh, I'm uh, Shane Moulton, and I am uh, in a previous lives. I've uh, been a college professor. I've taught this uh, uh, technology and integration into education for the last 15 years. Uh, but at the same time, I wanted to be able to, to practice what I preached when I was in the cl classroom. So uh, some partners and I, uh, we created uh, one of the largest uh, WISP or wireless internet service providers in Idaho. Uh, we decided that we wanted to branch out a little bit more, so we went down to Grand Junction, Colorado, created a WISP down there, and just for, uh, uh, for kicks and giggles, we created a WISP in Puerto Rico. And uh, a year ago, we could see the writing on the wall that WISP were, uh, the technology was getting really complicated, really hard to use uh, to get, that, uh, get the amount of bandwidth that was needed uh, to those customers. Uh, we had a buyer, and so we sold our, our WISP, and we created uh, a company called Optics. Uh, Optics, uh, we, we needed to cre uh, get bandwidth out to apartment complexes. Uh, we had a need uh, in Rexburg, Idaho, where apartments are very plentiful. Uh, it's a college town. Uh, lots of uh, apartments uh, within the, a mile radius of the university there, BYU-Idaho. And in the process, we needed to get lots of bandwidth out to them. So we became, uh, we went out and became a, a public utility, uh, got our CLEC license, and we got, ran a fiber optic ring around uh, the city, connected all these apartments, and then we realized, you know, st students don't want to be connected even by a fiber optic cable. They want to have wireless uh, capabilities everywhere. So then we went on the, the hunt to, to become, get a partner uh, to provide high density wireless in these apartment complexes. And in the process, we uh, went out, checked out, did all sorts of bake-offs, and uh, decided that uh, Xerus was the best uh, option uh, for us. One of the reasons why we, we chose uh, Xerus is when uh, it happened to be Mike, who you'll see uh, later on here, when Mike uh, introduced the array to me, it just made sense. We didn't like to pull wires. We, didn't, we weren't going to be in the wire, wired business. We wanted to be in the fiber optic wireless business. And the least amount of drops that we could do, uh, the better. So the Xerus array made sense. We liked the, the no controller. Uh, we wanted to have some si sort of centralized management system. Uh, XMS made great sense to us. We loved their support. They came out, they helped train us, they, they held us by the hand, made sure that we were doing it uh, by best practices. We, we became great friends with them as a result of this and they, they, they wanted us successful as well. Uh, they, they trained us. They made sure that we understood all the, the ins and outs of wireless. We thought we knew all sorts of, of things about wireless because we had you know, created a, a large WISP. And uh, an interesting story is my business partner, Darren, and I, we went down to Xerus headquarters. Put he says, you know part. what? They're making us come and do this. I want you to hit me every time I learn something new. Because we thought we knew it. We sat in their wireless training, and I, they called it Wireless 101 just to insult us, I think. But after the first hour, Darren said, stop hitting me. Uh, we, were, we were definitely humbled in the sense that we needed to make sure that we understood this, this new wireless medium that we were, we were dealing with. So the training was, was priceless to us uh, by choosing a partner. Uh, the next thing was they made the expectations real. They told us where the problems were. They told us how to avoid those problems so that now 
our expectations exceed the hype. And that is priceless as a customer. I hate to be overhyped because I have to live with it when, the custom, when my customers uh, and, and things go wrong. So uh, that, that's been really important to us as far as choosing a partner. Now I'm gonna highlight three or four examples that we use in our, our business. I don't know if any of you know where the Grand Tetons are, but in the Tetons is an awesome ski resort called Grand Targhee Ski Resort. They came to us and they, uh, they said, we've ripped and replaced our wireless infrastructure three times in the last four years. We're sick and tired of being sold a bill of goods and then not making it, or making it so that it doesn't perform. I promised them I, I, I can help you. They didn't believe me. They said, well, we're going to take this in baby steps. We're gonna, you're going to have to prove this one step at a time. We put three phases together and we introduced the first phase actually in June of this year. The first phase was to, to light up all of their uh, hotel accommodations. And during July uh, fourth weekend, they had a huge uh, uh, music so concert up there. About five to 6,000 uh, people showed up for this uh, music uh, in, the, in the Tetons. And a lot of the, the, the bands that were there were presenting new material. They were really worried about this because as we are all connected in Twitter and, and all these, these great uh, mediums, they were worried that a lot of their content was going to get out on the internet through uh, various torrents. They, they called me up and they said, is there any way that we can limit the torrents from getting and escaping these mountains before these artists are ready to release them. And so we, we were able to bring up the app control and they became uh, instant uh, uh, fans uh, of our product because we were able to use app control, we were able to use a lot of these other tools and uh, they've been very impressed. Uh, and uh, now all of a sudden have, have come back and said now phase two and three we're ready to do it right away. So that, that's been kind of a fun uh, project. Uh, our very first project was the Idaho Boise Center. We were really excited about that. Uh, one of the largest convention centers in Idaho. They uh, came to us, again, they'd been ripping and replacing a lot of technology over the last few years. We were they were tired of it. We presented them with the array uh, concept. Uh, before the end of the day, they were uh, saying, how fast can we get it installed? Uh, I think two weeks later we were back installing gear and they've never looked back. Uh, one of their customers, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Slide Cloud, it's uh, referred to as a second screen application presenter, a presentation tool. Basically what they do is they take advantage of, of everybody's uh, iPhones and, and, uh, and BYOD devices and then they are able to collect data from, their, uh, for, from the people that are attending the shows in real time and they can to tell if, if the presenter is presenting a, a topic, they're able to, to monitor that data in real time. That requires a lot of wireless uh, connectivity. Their technology does not perform unless our technology performs. Inside of the, the, the Boise Center, that's their best place that they can perform at. They want all of their customers within the Boise area to go and show up there because they know that they're going to have a successful show uh, because of the Xeris product that's there. Um, and then the, the last product is the, the off-campus student housing project where we are a managed service provider. We have, uh, we own our own ring, like I told you, and we, we install, we engineer, we own all of the gear that we put in to these apartment complexes because we want to be accountable. One of the last things, one of the things that I hate worst about this world is the banks are the last one to a good idea and the first one to get their money. And 
I wanted to be accountable to my customers. So I turned, around, turned that around. And so we own all the gear, we, we put it in, and then we uh, uh, allow them to then pay us on a per head basis uh, to, to manage their wireless network. We give them a lot of support. Uh, a year ago, we opened up our doors with our first customer. We had 200 APs. A year later, we now have 1,300 APs in this same college town. Uh, nightly, we had around 600 unique clients on our wireless network. A year later, we're uh, exceeding 10,000 wireless customers per night. The impressive part of this whole thing is, is I didn't want to run a phone call center or a support center. We average minimal phone calls, usually one per night, uh, and a lot of times we don't even have any phone calls at all. That's what happens when we engineer it and we put it in perspective there. Um, oh. I wanted to show you if I can some examples of that. Looking for the card E one. Uh, okay, this is that's yours, that's the optics one now. This is our real data right now. The problem is is uh, school's out of session and so we don't have uh, the demand on our network. But you can see the that uh, we have a couple of other instances of, uh, of uh, XMS running, but this is our largest one where we've got uh, 1,300 uh, access points uh, in 564 arrays. We have a combination, uh, just like Bruce was saying, that you want to have a, a one system fits all does not work. You've got to have a combination of that. So we've got a combination of the four radio arrays uh, down to the two radio arrays. Uh, and uh, there, that's the example of that. If I, uh, if I scroll down here, uh, here you can see we've had uh, 2,000 unique clients on our wireless network. And we've had uh, 706 unique clients on right now. Uh, if we come in here to the arrays, uh, let's see if I can. It's like looking through. You can see that we've got a number of 520s. That's the two radio AP. That's the two radio. And we have a number of 2420s, uh, which are the four radio uh, access point. Also, uh, this is the, the Grand Targhee live results right now. Um, and this shows you a, a graphical representation of the app control going, where it shows us that uh, FaceTime is showing 3.8% of the, the data. Uh, and this is one of the things that uh, the IT director at Grand Targhee really enjoys. It gives them a snapshot of exactly what's going across their network. They have limited bandwidth. They're in the tops of the mountains. They have 10 meg coming into their, their facility. They've got to use that 10 meg very judiciously in order to make it uh, work for them. Any questions? My Okay, well again, thank you for, for your time and I'll pass the time back to Bruce. I think, did you have any more on there? Uh, yeah, or, on the presentation. Oh, was there another? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, one of the things that we've, we've seen in, uh, when going out into these apartment complexes is if we take a, a snapshot of what 2-4 looks like, and if we did one here in this hotel, it would look really similar to this. And we question why wireless doesn't work and why people are unhappy with it. 
Oh, we don't question, we know. We don't, <laughs> you guys don't question it, but uh, the world questions it. In fact, this was a very expensive install for the customer. They had invested uh, close to $50,000 to put this uh, system that. in. Huh? <laughs> to build that. To build that. And they were very impressed with it until it didn't work. That looks like my apartment. That looks like your apartment? <laughs> At the same time, it does look like a um, perfect model of the Grand Tetons. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. Uh, <coughs> at the same time, that was 2.4. I showed this one because this was 5 gig. Was yeah. You see sweet. that? Uh, and it just baffles my mind that we, we don't use any of that more pure signal. In fact, I refer to it as AM and FM because a lot of people don't understand 2.4 and 5 gig. So I, I break it down and say, do you remember listening to radio on AM? And then do you remember listening to radio on FM? Which would you rather listen to? Mm -hmm. got FM radio, well, there's no s stations available. And then they get really cranky. Well, why don't you provide it? And so we then do this. Very minimal 2-4. So the 2-4 works as, as, as good as possible. And then we spread out the whole, across the whole five gig spectrum. And then they wonder, how does this work so well? And our competitors are still uh, amazed that we can even be in business. Because 5 gig, yeah, why would you even want to use that? Uh, any questions with that? I, I think that, that the pictures kind of speak for themselves. I mean, it's kind of stating the obvious, but <clears throat> that's really I, I, no reflection on competition's hardware. That's crappy install. Absolutely. It's kind of I, I, I agree. But that comes back from a pr customer's perspective, which I am pr representing. A customer wants the whole package. They love the hardware, but the support and training are priceless. Well, and, and I got I to gotta make a comment, um, Lee, that uh, that would be hard to do with anybody else's infrastructure without cramming a boatload of radios, right? You, you, oh no, I, I agree with that. I'm just saying the um, spectrum jazz. But yeah, your point sure. is valid. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you see that in New York City. In New York mm. City, you know, 2.4 is clutter, you open with five gigahertz and it's clear plate, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when you compare the two together, very minimal radios available or uh, possible. And when you control, uh, you know, a lot of these apartments are a quarter square block. When you control the airspace in that quarter split block of, of real estate, physical real estate, you can minimize the, the Wi-Fi in that area. And, and you can make it look like this. Okay. Thank you. All right.